Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's the greatest church on the planet doing today? You guys look good. You look so good. Say a big welcome home to all of those that are joining us online, as well as all of our first and second timers. So glad you guys are with us today. We know there's so many great opportunities to, to do a lot of crazy things like Lanier. You got, you got all the stuff in Metro Atlanta we can get involved in, but you put God first today. And watch this. God's going to step into those places that you're believing him for in your life. That's what I, my prayer for you is today. How many of you remember where you were on 9-11? You guys remember that? I, I do too. I was thinking about that this morning. And uh, we know that, that you know, we honor those who died. We also need to pray for our continued safety for our country. And um, it was more than an attack on buildings. It was an attack on families. It was an attack on our country. And for my generation, it was quite different maybe than maybe the older generation. So um, I, I, let's keep that in prayer, will we, for the folks that are, this hits home in a very uh, personal way today. Also, we'd like to do announcements again, but Summit Night is tonight. And from 6 to 8 p.m., I need your help to get your kids here. Okay, so maybe, maybe your teenager drives and you go like, well, they'll drive and they'll get themselves there. Okay, oh, listen, you tell them, i.e. threaten them, if you don't drive that car to church, that car is remaining in this driveway for a while. Come on, parents, you know, or but maybe you've got middle schoolers or maybe early high schoolers that don't have a driver's license. I need you to partner with our church so we can help us make a, a big difference in their generation, in their schools, in, in, trust me, it will touch your homes, okay? So tonight, I don't normally say this because, I, I mean, pastors are bad about, okay, next Sunday or this Sunday is going to be the best. Well, I thought last Sunday was the best. Like, um, it's not a hype thing, but I've got a word for the students tonight that I cannot wait for, for tonight to show up. Because I'm telling you, it's gonna, we're going to help a lot of students get free tonight. All right? So, are you ready for today? All right. Well, last Sunday, I'm going to pray in just a minute. Last Sunday, Pastor Craig Wendell from South Point Church in uh, just outside of Memphis, Tennessee, came and shared. He answered your question. You asked on Easter, we did a survey, hey, how do I raise godly kids in a worldly culture? What does that look like in 2022? He did an amazing job last week. And if you haven't heard that, I challenge you, go on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, go check that out. Today, this is one of those subjects that's a little uncomfortable. It's a little bit difficult. I, I spoke on this in February of 2019. I just felt led of the Lord to do that. And then I've watched, it's been up and to the right ever since. It's it's, it's scary. Today, I want to talk about and teach you from God's Word what the Bible says about depression. How many of you know that God wants to help some people? Like, He wants to set people free and help them through that. He wants, God wants His people to help people. And this is why I'm sharing this today. Because if the church would lean into this area of the country in this area of people's lives and be a blessing and not judge them, but help them. I'm telling you, we could, we could reap a harvest. You wouldn't have any idea how big it is because everybody knows somebody that's struggling in this area. And so I want you to do this. I'm going to pray. And I want you to pray for me today because I, look, this is going to be a better service than the last service. Come on, 11 o'clock, where are you at? I said some things that were scriptural and they were biblical, but it's maybe new. And some people looked at me like a cow at a new gate. So I'm going to share God's word with you because um, a third of Jesus' ministry was health care. <laughs> and so the church needs to lean into this, especially right now. Okay? So if, if you will, let's pray together and pray for me. Heavenly Father, <laughs> thank you for your word. Lord, these are not opinions. These are, these are some, some studies, some surveys, and some stats I'm going to share. 
But Lord, we're going to end up in your word because your word, the Bible, always brings light to our path. It's a lamp unto our feet. It'll, take, it'll help us take that next step. So Father, I pray that you would speak today through your holy scriptures. And Lord, I pray that we would get better at seeing people the way that you see them. We would get more sensitive to the spirit of God, honestly. We would be more compassionate to people that are genuinely hurting and struggling because that's what Jesus would do. Thank you, God. We'll never be the same after today. And God, I pray right now, (laughs) we'll get ahead of this. I pray right now, if there's anyone that's struggling with a heavy heart and a bad day has turned into a bad week, into a bad season, and you can't seem to shake it, there's a heaviness. And listen, God wants to set you free of that today. He wants to heal your broken heart. And if there's anybody under the sound of my voice that has entertained suicide, we take authority over that in Jesus' name. That thought did not come from God. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus came that we would have life and have it to the full. So if anyone is struggling right now, let your light shine on that so they will see, no, no, God is on the throne. I am in his care. God still has a plan for my life. And that thought is not of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Y'all sense the presence of God in this place already? Woo, come on. I'm excited. I drove in today thinking, man, God, you're going to help some people, some people today. So let me just do this. Let's talk about the subject. This is the question you asked. Hey, what do I do with mental illness? How How do I, what do I do with anxiety and depression? And what does God's word say about this? Specifically, what we want to do is kind of highlight or look at the topic of depression. Now, right off the bat, I want you to know that I am a pastor. I am not a doctor, a medical doctor. I am not a licensed counselor. Uh, I, I am not a, an expert on depression, but I did stay in a Holiday Inn Express last night. No, I did not. But I just want you to know right off the bat that um, what, why, what not to say to people who are struggling um, with mental illness, okay? Here's what you don't say. You don't say, well, what, are you so suppre- what are you so depressed about? Just snap out of it. I mean, look, look at all the blessings you have. Look at all the th- great things you have going on in your life. Just get over it. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. Um, a lot of people that are struggling with that, they don't even know how they got in it, let alone how to get out of it. And when we say, just get over it, or or even from a rightful heart, hey, the joy of the Lord is your strength, and just kind of just say it in passing, it's dismissive. And what that lands on people sometimes, sometimes is, I'm invisible and you don't see me. Hey, I pray that we would start seeing people the way that Jesus sees people, right? And so some are calling it the number one health problem in the world right now. And I want to share some stats with you today about why it's so important that the church be in the forefront of this conversation. Here's the first one. In the first year of the pandemic, in April 2020 through April 2021, the prevalence of people with depression or anxiety symptoms in America increased substantially from about 11%, which is the last time I shared on this, to 40%. Teenage and young adult users who who spent the most time on social media platforms were shown to have uh, from 13 to 66% higher rate of reported depression from those who spent less time. 2019, the Center of Disease Control Prevention estimated that 15.8% of Americans, adults, took prescription pills for medical health. Today, almost a quarter of Americans over the age of 18 are now medicated for one or more of these conditions, depression, anxiety, distraction, or fatigue. Since 2017, 41% increase in antidepressant use for teenagers. For teenagers. Can you just see why it's important to get your teenagers here on Sunday nights? 
Not just some at night, but every Sunday night for small group too, okay? Now, now I want, I'm going to explain about the medication side of this uh, just a second. How are Americans, I ask myself, how are Americans getting drugs so easily and so quickly these days? Well, emergency legislation passed in 2020 lifted the requirements that doctors see patients in person to prescribe certain controlled substances like Adderall. So I no longer have to go see and, and, and have a physical. I can get on a phone and get scriptions now. Okay? Now, now watch this. The purpose of today's message is not to diagnose your condition. Please hear me. Nor is it implying that you should stop taking your medication. And if you're on, on uh, medication right now for, for depression, please Keep taking your, your medication. At Highlands Church, we believe in godly physicians. Yes, we do. Godly medical professionals. Some individuals, some experience um, depression because of a chemical imbalance in their body. And medication can assist them in arriving at a balanced state in their body. Come on, somebody. That some, some of them can. This is why we should lead this conversation in, in, in depression. Number one, it's a, it's a biblical reason, all right? The, the Bible tells us that Jesus ministered to the mentally ill, to mentally sick, those that were depressed, those that were worried, those who were anxious and oppressed by evil thoughts. The Bible says that he went around teaching, preaching, and healing the sick. All throughout the villages, teaching, preaching, healing the sick. A third of Jesus' ministry was health care. All right, that, that historical reason. So it's a biblical reason. Here's this historical reason. Throughout church, the, the, throughout history, the church has always stepped in to help. And I don't know if you know your, some of the history, but when the Black Plague hit, everyone was, was fleeing and moving um, out of the cities. The church, Christ followers, moved into the cities to help heal people. All right? Matter of fact, the church has been in healthcare longer than any government program. We do it better than anybody. We had just forgotten where we came from. All right? And here's the last reason. It's a practical reason. Biblical, historical, and a practical reason. Why? Because every single person under the sound of my voice, we are experiencing or we know someone who is struggling in, in this area with mental health. And I'm going to come right out of the gate, and I'm going to say this right here. I'd love for you to, to share this. I'd love for you to post this. I'd love for you to take notes really well today is this. It is possible to be a fully devoted follower of Christ and still battle against depression. I'll say that again just to make God glad and the devil mad. It is possible to be a fully devoted follower of Jesus. You are committed to Christ, and yet you still battle, you still wrestle with, with depression. And if you don't believe that, then we need to take some books out of the Bible and some people out of the Bible. We're going to talk about one today, Elijah. How about this? King David can't be in there. Jonah can't be in there. Jeremiah, Isaiah can't be in there. No, no, no. These people were wholeheartedly living for God, and yet they wrestled. So if you're wrestling, wrestle well. Don't wrestle alone. We'll talk about it. Today, mental illness is just that. It's, just, it's an illness. It's not a lack of faith. I mean, and this is why I believe that people believe it's a lack of faith. You'll come down to the tables for prayer at the end of a service for a, a, a cut or a bruise or a little tension at home or a little, we need a raise at work with the finances, whatever. But God forbid you come down and say, I'm, I'm struggling with depression. Why? Because we have labeled some things incorrectly. And we have got to get better at literally ministering to people right? What is depression? Let's look at it. A mood disorder characterized by anhedonia. Anhedonia is this inability to feel pleasure anymore. I just, I, I, I just, I can't even feel pleasure anymore. Or extreme sadness, poor concentration, sleep problems, feelings of guilt, helplessness, and hopelessness. And I'm telling you, there's this stigma with depression that there doesn't need to be. You wouldn't think any less of someone if they came down and they were on heart medication or they were, on, they were, they were a diabetic and they needed their sugar levels regulated. But God forbid you say that you're on some, some, some medication for mental illness. We've got to get better, and we can. 
all right? Why? Write this down. It's not a sin to be sick, nor is it a sin to take medication for mental illness. Ah, it's just not. It's, it's just not. People forget that the brain is an organ too. I need to say that again. It's not a sin to be sick. It's just not. It's not a sin to take mental medication for mental illness. Again, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes when you see your physician, they can help right the ship and get some chemical things worked out in the body. Now, now there's no shame in that. Um, uh, another stigma that, that I want to talk about, so medication is one. The other is, is um, uh, therapy or a good godly counsel for mental illness. Thank you, Jesus, for good godly counselors, right? I mean, it's, it, you, people just, they, they want to go under the radar. I'm seeing a counselor. Good. Hey, your pastor's seeing a counselor. Why? Because some of you make me crazy. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love everybody. You know what? Do you know why sometimes I see a godly counselor? Because I'm doing good. And I want to keep doing good. Wait, wait, don't you go when the wheels are falling off? No, you go when you need oil change. You go when you need the tires balanced. I'm doing good. I want to, I want to, stay, I want to stay being a good dad, a good, a good, good husband, a, a good pastor that loves his church, that loves the community. Can we just park that idea, that stigma of they're seeing a therapist? Good for them. Good for them. They're taking medicine. Good for them. God bless it. Pray over that before you take it. Amen, right? A no mental health issue is simple. They're, they're all complex. It could be a biological component that requires medication. It could be a, a physiological component that, that requires rest and, and diet. It could be a thought component that could would involve like a counselor. Watch this. Or it could be all of the above. It really can. But we like to put people in corners based upon titles. No, they're struggling. And guess what? We love people. Why? Because Jesus loves people. Here's why I have a sense of urgency about, about this topic. I want you to take a picture of these stats. One million people per year worldwide commit suicide. 40,000 people per year in America alone commit suicide. That's twice, that's twice the murder rate, by the way. And suicide is the number one. I'm going to look at this, these young people right now. The number one killer of individuals, 15 to 24, is suicide. There's not a close second. So why doesn't the church see this opportunity and step into this moment and say, listen, you don't have to die in your pain. You don't, because suicide is a permanent, irreversible attempt to fix a temporary problem. A pastor that I, I, I've learned from over the years, some of the content of, of the resources that I got today were from for Pastor Rick Warren in Saddleback Church, over four decades of, of, of amazing ministry, uh, who just passed the baton, and someone now is pastoring that church. And but you know what what's, I love about Pastor Rick is his family was so... It was so leaning into this, this subject and blessed so many people with great resources. His own family was touched by, by suicide when his son took his life. When I heard that, I thought, dear God, help us. And I'm thankful for Pastor Rick and his wife that said, you know what? We're not going to sit and let this be a part of our history. We want to help be part of the solution moving forward as well. God bless their family. And so what I wanted to do is share the hotline that he shares with his church as, as many share across the nation, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-TALK. Many of you need, to, you need to put this in your phone. I've got this in my phone. Yes, we can pray for people. Yes, we can pray with people. But yes, we can also equip people with some tools to help process their pain. Come on, somebody, Right? If anyone is mentioned taking their life, I want you to encourage them to call that number today. There are trained people that can talk to them and walk with them through this moment. Now, now for the end of our time, it's a lot of information. For the end of our time, everybody turn to 1 Kings chapter, chapter 18. Now, go ahead and turn to chapter 19, okay? Chapter 18 is this, is this showdown. It's, it's Elijah 
he's all in this, he's, he's, it's the 400 prophets of Baal and Elijah. And there is this, this moment where he said, I'll tell you what, showdown between gods, whoever's gods, whoever, whoever does this, their God wins. So they said, all right, we're going to build an altar and a sacrifice and stack it up and our God's going to consume it. He goes, that's fine. That's cool. So that, that he said, all right, go ahead, do that. They did that. Nothing happened. He said, all right, boys, take water, saturate the sacrifice, saturate the burnt offering, and God consumed it. So bam, immediately God consumed it. 400 prophets of Baal were killed. God's people win. It was amazing. Of course, this is the Cliff Notes version. Cliff Notes, young people, are little yellow booklets. (laughs) Okay, here's some deep teaching. Are you ready? 1 Kings 18. The next chapter is chapter 19. That's the deep teaching for the day. So go to chapter 19, okay? Elijah just came out of this mountaintop experience. I mean, his God wins. The the people see that there is only one true God, and it's Elijah's God. He comes off of that, and then then immediately comes into a, a low season, a low moment, a heart sick moment, which I need to stop right there and let some of you know that if you're depressed, it's not just because, well, let's say it like this, depression many times will visit you after a mountaintop experience. A low moment, a heart sick moment many times comes on the end of a victory. Wasn't because he was not living for God. Well, if he was living for God, really, Elijah? No, He was standing up for God and yet became in that moment, all right? And I know this to be true, and Sandra can tell you, I am at my weakest moments on Sunday afternoon. We have a a rule. Hal doesn't shop on Amazon on Sunday afternoons. I'm serious. We don't. I'll I'll buy some labradoodle on on eBay or something. Like, no, keep that man away from Amazon or or whatever. Because here's what happens. No matter how good or great of a day it was, people making decisions for Christ, God helping people, what happens is I will walk myself after when everybody goes home, I'll walk myself to the parking lot, get in my car, and the devil is waiting for me in my passenger seat. By the way, that's not my wife. She drives a different vehicle. I didn't, that don't even put words in my mouth. That's not what I said. She drives a different vehicle. So it's an empty car, but the devil's waiting, and this is what the devil will say. Man, that was a good day. I hope you enjoyed it because they're not coming back. (laughs) You know what's funny? It's the same lie he told me on day one of our church plan. 16 years later, he's saying the same lie. And your pastor sometimes believes it. And, or, 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 it's an amazing time. We come out, we're high-fiving, going, no one can take credit for that. God, only you did that. That was amazing. I get in the car, and he'll say, the devil, just a whisper. Man, that was all right. That was good. I hope you enjoyed it because it will never get better. Either of those, I can't win. And that's why Hal doesn't play on Amazon. On Sundays, Monday mornings, different. But thank God for my awesome wife, who reminds me of my calling. Reminds me, I've been equipped and empowered by the Holy Spirit. It's not, it's not me, it's, it's the Lord. He reminds us of our assignment as a church. This bigger than a personality, you understand that? You understand that, right? Please help me, God. We don't do, we don't do, we don't do that here. It's all about Jesus. That's the name I want you to remember when you go home today. Not a, a brand. Okay, she reminds us, she reminds me, this is who you are. This is who our church is. And remember the faithfulness of our God. And then I'm like, all right, babe, you're saying that because you're married to me. You got to, you know. But then, then my buddy Craig, the one that preached last Sunday, he'll call me on a Monday. Hey, dude, hey, tell me what God did. And when I quit the ministry about eight o'clock, he talks me back in around 930. And I talk him back in when, when it, I said, all right, who quit? He goes, dude, I quit. Okay, I can't quit today because Craig quit. I got to talk him back in. You know, it's good to have good godly friends. 
And that's why, put this up there, Highlands Church Small Groups. It's not a program. It's a lifeline to keep you going with God. It's, 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 it's a place where you can take your mask off and go, I'm having one of those moments. I still love God. I still love God. I still love my family. I'm very grateful. I'm just heart sick. And I don't, I'm in a funk. Anybody been in a funk? I'm just in a funk. I can't. It's a fog. It's like I'm running in quicksand. And that's when your friend, the person sitting across the couch, sitting on the cross of the, the kitchen table, remember you're called. Remember your assignment. Remember God. Remember, I'm not going anywhere, says the friend. And then walk with people through it. Y'all glad you came to church today? Okay, so let's keep reading. First Kings chapter 19. Oh, I'm going to preach fast. Okay, here we go. We've got eight minutes. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done. And now he killed all the prophets with a sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say this, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like one of them. In other words, you killed them, I'm coming after you. Isn't that funny? He just came off a mountaintop experience, and he let the voice of one person drag him down. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba, Judah, he left his servant there. Now watch this. That's, that's a good indicator. You never want to be alone. Okay? While he went himself a day's journey into the wilderness. This is not just a walk around the neighborhood to clear his mind. He is intentionally setting himself in isolation. All right? He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. Just kill me. Just do it. I am done. I have had enough, Lord. He said, take my life. I know better than any of my ancestors. Three mistakes that Elijah made that, that led him down that path of, to depression, okay? I'm not diagnosing. I'm just saying from the scriptures, first things first, write it down. Elijah chose to isolate himself. He, he, he left his servant there when he went another day's journey. That wasn't, I just got separated from my friends. He knew exactly what he was doing. Elijah didn't accidentally find himself alone. He chose to walk alone. And, and when you're in that bad mental space, you're the last person you need to be taking advice from. Right? Isolation is the first thing that you do when you become heavy hearted. Write this down. Loneliness is the enemy to recovery. It's the enemy to recovery. We are not designed to do life alone. I'll prove it. This is what I'm sharing tonight to the, to the young people, to the students. Okay, the, the first problem that mankind had was not sin. It was solitude. Genesis chapter two, it is not good that man shall be alone. Genesis chapter three enters the devil. Before the devil showed up, there was a problem. The problem was humans in isolation. Adam is alone. Well, I thought that was about a man and a wife and being, yes, but the human condition is God has wired us for a longing for belonging. Some of y'all are still chewing on that right now. Yeah, it's not good that you're alone. Yeah, I get it. You can't surround yourself with people all the time, but some of you are choosing to walk that path and you know it, and you know it. All right, second thing is this. Number two, Elijah assumed his feelings to be truth. He assumed his feelings were not, we're, we're telling him straight up the truth. I was afraid and I ran and he prayed that he might die. Feelings, good ones and bad ones. Hey, feelings are great. God gives us feelings, but we do not make long-term decisions based upon temporary feelings because feelings can be flighty. Right? So he came off that, that moment with God. He was on cloud nine. Then he said, I pray that I would die. All right? Which one's feelings were true? Well, both were his, that's what he was feeling at that moment. But thank God we don't make long term decisions based on temporary feelings. The last takeaway from Elijah's story comes from his statement Take my life, God. I am, you know what? I'm no better than my ancestors. Wait a minute. Hold on. He's playing the same game that we play in 2022, the game of comparison. 
I am no better than the people on Instagram. I am no better than people on, I, just, I, I don't measure up. When I, was, when I was 25, I said, I'm gonna make my first million by 30. When 30 came, 35, 40. <laughs> Why? I, want, I, I, I wanted to be at a certain place. You know why? It wasn't just me. It's because my friends were at a certain place. And we do it too. Teenagers, you're not the only one that does it. Your mom and daddy does it just as bad. They do it just as bad. I, 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 you need to know that no one's life looks like it does on Instagram. I find it very interesting that um, I was, someone texted me early this morning and they said, hey, I, I think your, your Facebook has been hacked. I'm like, I don't even know. I'm not on Facebook. I haven't been on Facebook in over a decade. I lost the passwords to that. I don't even know it. I can't have correct it if I wanted to correct it, right? And so there's there's an Instagram and a Facebook. Now I have a new Instagram, but whatever. But um, um, Sandra looked it up, and apparently, according to Facebook, I have a helicopter, a speedboat, and a new wife. And apparently, I live also in California. Baller. <laughs> and Sandra said, uh, no, you don't. I'm like, no, I don't. <laughs> but, but boy, but if you buy into that, that lie, you're buying into just that. It's a lie. And you're in the comparison game. And you never win when the, when the goal always moves. When the goal line moves, you never score. Right? Let's keep going. First Kings chapter 19, verse 5. Then he lay down under the bush and he fell asleep. Mark that right there. Circle that. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. Mark that. He looked around and there by his head was, his, was some bread baked over hot coals. Hey, take that all my keto lovers. Got bread in the Bible right there. Boom. They need to get some of that Texas Roadhouse butter. Can I get an amen in the house of God? <laughs> Hey, I'm not, I'm just preaching. I'm just preaching. Okay, get a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. What? Two naps in one day? Mark that. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, get up and eat. He's telling me to eat again. I got to obey God for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank and strength by that food. He traveled for 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went to a cave and spent the night. I want to encourage you, read the rest of the chapter this week. I'll give you the snapshot version. So he, he met with God and God ministered to him and, and God came to him in the form of the, of the he thought it was the earthquake and the, 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 the wind and the fire, the earth, wind and fire. That was in the Bible. Y'all didn't even know it. First Kings chapter 19. Okay. But, but watch, he came in a still small voice. And I, I read that and I went, that is us. Some of us are so busy, it's messing with our ability to hear the whisper of God. And we're asking God to shout again, but he doesn't shout to people he's close with. That's good preaching. God, I can't hear you. Where are you? God's, he could be in an earthquake, but he'd rather whisper in your ear. But you gotta get quiet. So here's some four practical Homework this week, four practical steps, all right? This is what Elijah did, uh, didn't do. Well, actually, he did some of these, okay? So watch, number one is this, eat, eat. Be careful what you're putting in your body. My kids are just so wound up. Well, yeah, they drink Mountain Dew for breakfast. I just, I just feel so sickly. It's because you're putting garbage in your engine. Okay, now I'm not a dietitian. Okay, keep preaching. You're like, just move off of that answer. Move on. You can't keep putting junk in your body and say, God is my healer. Yes, but you are, you are messing yourself up. Give him something to work with. Okay, keep going. All right, number one, eat. Number two, watch, sleep. Rest your body and your mind. Some of you need to get back. We've talked, we've talked about this. Get back to Sabbath. You've been thinking like it all depends on you and you need to cease one day and say, God, I'm going to live and trust that you got it all worked out. 
And on that day of Sabbath, let God refresh your body and refresh your mind. Some of you are going too hard, too long. You're binding the devil, but you're making your body sick by not stopping. I get it. The devil wants to kill, steal, and destroy. I get that. Give God something to work with. I jokingly say, but there's some seriousness to it. Some of you need to go home today, take a nap, and dare your kids to wake you up. Say, I need 30 minutes. You do not cut yourself. You do not jump off the deck. You do not play under the car. You do not t- go swimming laps in the tub. I like lock them in the room, whatever it takes, right? And just let mom and dad rest. I thought I'd get a bigger amen out of that. All right, you're too spiritual for that. All right, ne- here's the next one. Number three, surround yourself with godly friendships. How? Refuse. I make the decision. I'm not going to isolate myself. I'm not going to do it. How do I do that? Well, we've made that easy for you at Highlands by small groups. Your best friend is probably one click away. Your next, I'm telling you, your friend group is just one step away. Your your discipleship process is stalled out because you can't grow all by yourself. You need people, iron sharpens iron. We sharpen one another. You're getting dull when you're alone. Number four, value silence. See, he wanted, hey, God, are you in the earthquake? Are you in the wind and the fire? Mm -mm. Make meditations or moments of silence part of your daily time with the Lord. Can I just, can we practice that again? We did that a few, a couple weeks ago at a, at a night of worship. We're going to do that right now. I'm going to show you what I'm doing lately. Lately. I am, I am meditating more than I ever have. Meditation, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cross, not crisscross applesauce. No, I'm just being quiet because my busyness of my mind has muted the voice of God sometimes. And so let me, te- let me show you how to do that. Can we, can we do that together? This is not the time to give a word. This is not the time for you to give a word to your, this is the time for God to minister to your heart. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Enjoying the presence of God. Father, thank you that God is on the throne and we are in his care. We've forgotten the treasure of meditating and sitting and being in the presence of God. And I just think that we're getting back to that. Yeah, we may not have stained glass windows and beautiful. I'd love that. We don't have some of the things. But you know, it doesn't take a church with a white picket fence around it to sit and not be distracted. You've got to learn to teach yourself, I will be still in the presence of God. And when things start to interrupt that moment, say out of your mouth, this is what Linda Jones shared with me, a godly counselor here at Highlands. God is on the throne and I am in his care. Yeah, but what about your kid? God is on the throne. And I am in his care. Yeah, but what? I will sit and know that he is God. I will be still. (laughs) Some of us are like toddlers. You cannot be still. That was the longest 30 seconds. Some of you are convinced that was like five minutes, right, Pastor? It was 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. But we got to exercise those muscles. Are y'all glad you came to church today? Let's stop drowning out the still small voice with the disease of busy. All right, let's stand to our feet. All right, let me pray for you before we leave. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, 
We pray for everyone, and under the sound of my voice, that's struggling in the area of depression or anxiety or any type of mental illness. And we first remind them that you, God, love them, and we love them. If those are here and they are struggling with it, I pray the love of God would just envelop them. The presence of the Holy Spirit would be all over them, that they would go, my God, he is with me. I don't feel invisible anymore. I don't feel alone anymore. God remembers my name. And the church has heard my cry. Help us to be better at being more godly and Christ-like in the way that we treat others. If you've got a weight on your life, the Bible says, cast your care over on the Lord, for he cares for you. I'm ready for God to take it. He's ready for you to drop it. So by faith, just let him know, I'm laying this down today, and I'm walking out different than I came. Before we leave, we never like to close out a ministry moment without giving people the opportunity to have a real relationship with God. Guys, we're all sinners, and that's why we need a Savior. Jesus died and paid the price for our sin so we could know God, literally know God. That's available. Past erased, sins forgiven, hope for tomorrow, help for right now, the Holy Spirit coming in, making his residency on the inside of you, your spirit being made new. All of that is available through Jesus Christ. And if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I don't have that. I'd like that. Or Pastor, I walk with God, but I'm, I've walked away from God and I, I want to come home. I want that again. And I want to start that right now. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm just going to say a general prayer over the crowd and those that are joining us online. If you want to be included in that, just slip your hand up on the count of three. One, two, three. Anybody in this place? God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Awesome. God bless you. Thank you. This is awesome. I'm going to say this prayer. I'm going to say this out loud, and I want you to say it out loud. Let your heart agree with it. Everyone here is going to say this out loud as an encouragement to you for taking this big step in, in your faith. Isn't this awesome, ladies and gentlemen? People are saying yes to God today. Say this, say, Heavenly Father, I am so sorry for the things that I've done. I'm sorry for the things that I've said. I am sorry for living life my way. And I ask you now, Lord, Forgive me. Cleanse me. I surrender my life to you. Give me a fresh start. Forgiven past and hope for my tomorrow. Say this. Say, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe you died on a cross. I believe that you paid for my sin. And I believe that you rose from the dead. And today, I call you my Lord. I give you my life. Holy Spirit, fill me right now. Give me the power to live for Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Father, I pray a blessing over every single person under the sound of my voice. As we start out this week, God, we do it putting you first in our decisions and you first in our prayer and our conversations. You first, when we roll over in the morning, we'll say, good morning, God. It's good to serve you. It's good to know you. Use me, God, to make a difference in the lives of others. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may God give you what the world cannot. May God give you his peace. And all God's people said amen. 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 Put your hands together for the folks that made decisions for Jesus today. Come on. We can do better than that. People were born again today. Yes. 
Hey everyone, thank you so much for checking out our Highlands YouTube channel. We're so glad that you're here. If you are anywhere in the northern metro Atlanta area, we would love to personally invite you to join us in person at our coming campus. Or if you're watching from somewhere else, you can join us live every Sunday at 9.30 and 11 a.m. with the rest of our online campus. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with our Sunday services. If you're enjoying our services, please let us know by liking and sharing our videos. We would love to hear from you. If you'd like to know more about our church, check out our website, highlandschurch.tv for more information. You can find the link in the comment section below. Thanks again for visiting our Highlands YouTube channel, and we hope to see you soon.